have one, one wife. And the Egyptian modernist legislation limited people to one wife. Uh, but um, based on those reformers. But Islam is going backwards on that at the moment. The more uh, fundamentalist-minded Muslims are going back to Quranic law, back to fundamentalist Islam. Don't like the modernist innovations. And that's a question that I can't get into in this course. It's too complicated. And Iraq may be a new way. It may not be. Uh, so we'll see about that. But one of the big issues here is, um, is the woman matter of divorce. Someone asked, can a woman divorce her husband? No. Should a man be able to say, I divorce you, and you're divorced? Well, most people think that is unfair. But in Islam, it's worked, and they say, well, don't interfere with our culture. So, okay, don't interfere with our culture. We won't as long as you don't interfere with other people's culture. But you see, if you go to places like India and crush the Indians, because that you consider them to be uh, idolaters and polytheists, then persons have a right to interfere. And for instance, if you go to Afghanistan and blow up Buddhist statues uh, or, or great works of art that are 13 centuries old, then people have a right to interfere. Because you're not showing the same consideration for others as you want others to show to you. So if you come to the World Trade Center on the basis of Islam and blow up the buildings with, uh, you know, that uh, how many people are killed? 3,000 people or so are killed in the most horrifying circumstances, people jumping off the buildings. Uh, you know, in fire situations out of panic, well, uh, you know, there's a response there, yeah. I just have a comment about the 9-11, why uh, some people think they did what they did. When, now after 9-11, when they showed the interview of uh, some of the uh, what he specifically said over and over again, that we did this because there are so many Muslims are being killed uh, in the United that's, States. That's just, that's just, so, uh, Look, uh, you can't kill people in buildings because you got a grudge. You know, I know, I know. You yeah. can, but that, well, that, is, that is one of the reasons. Well, that is no excuse. Talk the, about it doesn't matter what his reason is. There's no excuse. There is no excuse. No, you can't. You know, there's no excuse for, for killing innocent people, even in Islam. In that's just propaganda. I don't care what, what but not. It's hard to be cruel. I mean, if you, if you want to fight a soldier with a soldier, that's fine. But no one's saying that you shouldn't do that. You can't take a... Uh, uh, an airplane with, and what about the passengers in the airplane? What, they're just tools for your wishes? Uh, you know, 200 people in an airplane? <laughs> you just take them and say, okay, now I'm going to make a human bomb out of you? That's just, that's ridiculous. I mean, I, pardon me, I, I'm not even going to go into that. Yeah. There, there is no, there's no rationale, period, for that. If you have a grudge, go and fight on the battlefield, okay, fine. You can't take an airplane with the people in it. Oh, if you took an airplane without any people in it, even the pilot, you have no right to do that to a pilot, an innocent pilot of an airplane that's just trying to make a living. You have no right to do that. You say, oh, you're killing Muslims. Well, I don't think that Americans are running around killing Muslims by any, in any willful way that they really want to. They've been very close to Muslims, very close to Saudi Arabia, very close to Pakistan, taken Pakistan's part over India over and over and over again, tried to help the situation in uh, Kosovo, help the Muslims uh, survive the Serb attacks, uh, help the situation in Bosnia, help the Muslims survive the uh, Kurd attacks, have advocated Turkey's entrance into the common market. I mean, no, that's just probably, you know, that's, uh, you know, that's just, you know, but, you know, it works on the mass level. Anyway, I don't want to get into that. I, I apologize for getting into the mom I'm just talking about women. Uh, <coughs> the point is that a lot of Muslims, though, don't want to reform anything. They want to stay in the medieval well, fine. That's their that's their right. But uh, this issue here, women's, is one of the real problems that people want to get their teeth in. Turkey, for instance, if it wants to come into the common market of Europe, has got to deal with these issues. And Turkey has. Turkey has had modernist legislation since the Ottoman days. I wrote my PhD dissertation on Turkish legislation in the Ottoman period, and in fact, it was a reformist legislation. And um, Turkey's gone backwards from the 19th century. This was done in the 1830s to the 1880s. And Turkey was moving very steadily forward. And it's gone backwards in this onslaught of the 2021st century in terms of these issues. I'm not saying it's gone backwards if you don't want those issues. Anyway, let's go on. We're talking about divorce here. Uh, my job is to show what he, what, he, what he believes, but I see some of you are shocked by this issue of divorce, pronouncing a divorce three times, and it does exist. Like it or not, it is recognized. 
I divorce you is simple. Now in Judaism too, it used to be the fact that a woman could not divorce a man, only a man could divorce a woman. It was called giving a woman a get. And uh, that was it. And uh, lately, the rabbinical councils in Israel and America have less than that. And they've actually put men in prison in Israel to force them to give a woman a divorce uh, under certain circumstances. There's people sitting in prison in Israel. That's the only way they can deal with the problem. Because of the Ottoman Empire, the way the religious system works is the individual communities were responsible for the personal status of their community. So Christians regulated Christian people, Jews regulated Jewish people, Muslims regulated Muslim people, Baha'is regulated Baha'is, and so on. This was called the Malek system in the Ottoman Empire.